After the cancellation of Formula 1's Imola race, last weekend's Monaco Grand Prix was our first opportunity to see the multiple upgrades that teams have bought for the start of the European season. But for fans and engineers up and down the pit lane, it was the Monte Carlo Marshals who helped deliver us some bigger gold dust when it came to revealing the real secrets of the 2023 Formula 1 cars. We're talking about car floors, which have proved to be one of the biggest mysteries of the current F1 designs. Monaco proved to be such an eye-opener because unlike other venues where, when a car stops, it's loaded onto the back of a low loader, covered up by tarpaulin and returned to the pits. In Monte Carlo, they hook the cars up to cranes and lift them high over the barriers. In an era where car performance is driven by what airflow is doing underneath the car, it showed off the underside designs that we almost never get to see. So when Lewis Hamilton's off at Mirabeau in practice and Sergio Perez's crash at Sandoval in qualifying meant their cars were stranded on the track, we got a visual treat as the marshals helped lift the Mercedes and Red Bull high into the sky. Once up in the air, the photographers got some exceptional views, which is why I've got Matt here to talk us through what we learned. So Matt, first of all, how excited were you when these cars were being lifted up in the air? Well, to be honest, there's a bit like a kid in a candy shop, as you'd expect. Uh, it's so, so rare these days for us to get shots of the underfloor. Uh, as you mentioned, that's partly to do with, with the way that the marshals deal with getting the cars recovered off the circuit. But obviously, Monaco is pretty uh, different in that respect. And I was kind of rubbing my hands together when I saw uh, Hamilton uh, in, in the position he was in because I expected it to be lifted by crane. But the, the manner in which it was done uh, obviously made it much more uh, appealing to people like myself but obviously frustrating to, to people at Mercedes uh, and then obviously very similar for, for the Perez incident so yeah it's a, also the first opportunity really that we've had to see the underfloor designs this season because of the way uh, that the, the cars are, are dealt with in terms of recovery now so that is partly the reason why I was so excited about seeing these shots. Yeah, I think, think Toto Wolff called it something out of Cirque du Soleil rather than something from Formula 1, so uh, I, th I think the teams weren't so happy. But I mean, before we get into the specifics of these, these two cars, can we just talk about this generation of ground effects? We hear so much about airflow under the car and it's a hidden secret. So can you just give us some insight into you know, what these pictures show about where the airflow is going and how it's being managed from the, kind of the, the front floor fences all the way through to the, the diffuser? Yeah, so I think firstly, it's probably best to talk about some perception versus reality, because I think we classify these cars as ground effect cars, even though that term is a, is a little bit loose in this respect of the new cars. I think people really tend to think about the older generation of ground effect cars, things like the Lotus 79. And in that respect, obviously, you didn't have the forward fences. And I think most people perceive the idea of having these fences on the front floor as things that would literally straighten the airflow and then throw as much airflow to the, the tunnels and the diffuser because of that perception that they had of the older generation of, of cars using ground effects. However, obviously what we are seeing is that teams are using the fences in a way in which that you sort of offload as much of the airflow out the side of the car in order that you can improve the flow structure that then is generated towards the tunnels and the diffuser at the rear so a lot of the the, the what we're seeing at the front end of the floors is all to do with turbulence management i.e the wake of the front tires and obviously you have to think about how that works dynamically in terms of the load deformation on the tires and also obviously the steered uh, section of the the, the 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 wheel in the assembly uh, so there's a lot going on uh, and obviously that's why we see a lot of changes being made by the teams to try to improve performance in that area but I think it's obviously pr quite critical that people realise that that's the reason why we've seen these um, strikes and, and floor fences moved to, to, to the outside of the car they're very much like the old barge boards that we had in the previous generation of car we're dealing with weight turbulence from the front tyres and then obviously that will improve how the, the rest of the floor operates It obviously wasn't just the Mercedes we got to see the, the Red Bull was lifted up as well so we've got a you know, perfect direct comparison between two key cars what are the differences that you spotted between them uh, i think the there's obviously very subtle details that we we will pay more attention to over the course of the rest of the season but in terms of you know the, the larger profile picture uh, the front strikes or, or fences, uh, the camber, the shape, the orientation of those are always going to be de very different between all of the teams because of the way in which the teams are trying to manage the airflow um, away from the car. So they're trying to deal with the weight turbulence from the, the front front tyres. So that area of the car is obviously the first critical area, much like we used to see with the front wings and the way teams used to try to push airflow around the front tyre. Now we've seen uh, a much more broader design 
shift towards that with the the, uh, the fences at the front of the floor. Uh, in terms of Mercedes, they are being a bit more aggressive in that respect right on the edge of the floor. So if you look from the exterior shots, in fact, you can see a metal strip with little vortex turbulators on uh, to try to manage that flow uh, a little bit more microscopically at the edge. As you move down the edge wing, they are being a bit more brute force with that as well over at Mercedes. So we've seen a very intricate sort of C-wing on the, the Red Bull this year uh, as they've moved to a new edge wing design but over on Mercedes especially with this new update we've seen them add a, a f more flared uh, edge wing so more upwashed um, and, and that obviously then has these turbulators on it as well in order to try to manipulate the airflow and the the turbulent wake uh, as it's pushed outwards uh, and even further back on the car uh, we've we've got uh, right at the back of the edge wing. We've got even you know a, a small selection of turbulators again on the lower fence in order that that continues to push the the airflow out and helps with the wake around the rear tire uh, because obviously that is where we're we're trying to manage the airflow, uh, the turbulence that's created both front and rear. Because as we've mentioned in the past on uh, the the previous regulations, things like tire squirt, which is the deformation of the rear tire uh, under load, that has an impact as it as it pushes flow laterally into the diffuser so all the teams are trying to manage that uh, again cues from last year's design are now to be found on on the mercedes as well so the keel design we've got sort of the the way in which that that is shaped uh and and the tunnels are shaped in order to try to improve the flow to the rear so mercedes have moved more towards the red bull design in that respect and certainly they've added uh the rear uh, revetted edges to their sort of teardrop shaped bottle section at the, at the bottom end of the car of the keel. A lot of movement towards a Red Bull philosophy in many ways, but we've also seen other teams take that direction throughout the course of last year. So we know that the concepts must be good because all the teams are iterating through these in their wind tunnels uh, and CFD. So it is a, a design that uh, teams will adopt because they know that it does work so uh, a gravitation towards the red bull of last year is, is more what i'm seeing from from the mercedes um and obviously red bull have sort of iterated beyond that and have been improved upon uh, the designs that we saw from them last year with all of the surfaces i've just mentioned just increased in their detail in order to improve performance are they trying to achieve different things with with the airflow or can we can we call them the, the same concept or are, are there big philosophical differences in how they're managing this airflow i think the overall concept's very similar because of the way that the regulations are set out and how tight-knit they are in certain circumstances so you're always going to have certain design directions have to be pushed in a certain direction but you will also see the teams lay their own dna on top of that so you'll see a variation in the shape of the keel the tunnels uh, the way that they manage airflow in and around the diffuser area um but, it, it, you know, it, it is an area of extreme development because it is an area where you can make huge amounts of performance. So you will see teams make, you know, changes throughout the course of the season to try to make improvements in that particular area. Obviously, Red Bull being the, the pace setting car will be of big interest to everyone up and down the pit lane trying to work out just what they're doing that, that makes so good. Was there anything that kind of stood out as unique on that car or different? I mean, I noticed, for example, the diffuser was, has these steps at the back, um, obviously trying to do something to the airflow. Yeah, so it, we've noticed from the photos quite clearly that there's a step in the diffuser ramp, which is about halfway between the front kick line and the trailing edge of the diffuser, which is very interesting in terms of the way in which that has a performance benefit. Obviously, it's going to have other fringe consequences as well. And we've all talked about at the start of the season, the DRS advantage that Red Bull appear to have. Now, obviously, this will be intrinsically linked to that because of the way in which that the airflow will work in that area. And the fact that obviously the diffuser beam wing and rear wing all talk to one from an aerodynamic perspective so it could be part and parcel of why we've seen them have some of that advantage obviously it's not the entire story but it does start to add some layers to those questions last year we heard a lot about the, the red bull ice skate and i think you wrote some some articles on it is it still there this year and you know have you spotted something similar on the mercedes as well now that that's actually gone under these new regulations because of the changes that were made for 2023 to to change the the sort of x you know the outboard section of the floor so we we've, we've not really got that anymore on the cars uh, but they are still paying attention to that area of the car because obviously uh, the, the the way in which that it will move 
move towards the ground as it's loaded up. So uh, what we are seeing is uh, the, the teams are paying particular attention to the, the edges of the floor. And a lot of them have got sort of metal edges in order that it doesn't that the carbon fibre doesn't wear away because it's replaced by the metal instead. Um, I think one thing from last season that we have started to see uh, a, a good proportion of the teams develop, uh, a lot of them didn't have it, but a lot of them gravitated towards it this season is sort of the mouse house uh, which is a, a sort of circular area around the rear side wall of the diffuser uh, and that helps to, to sort of load up the edge of the diffuser we're starting to see all of the teams use it and in fact Ferrari actually have two in, in their particular area so they're all starting to you know make changes that improve upon what we've seen in the past and there's a lot of convergence going on as well uh, as they all sort of gravitate to to the solutions that they all believe to be the the better one that will will carry performance forward one thing i noticed that was quite interesting between the the two pictures was the plank was very different um if you looked at lewis's car you know very clean on sergio's very worn away is there anything in that was it just that sergio's planks a lot older than lewis's is it that sergio's plank was damaged when he when he had the crash or is there something kind of more significant going on there I think there's a combination of all those factors uh, I think a lot of the teams will be looking at the the plank wear on the Red Bull and, and looking at how even it is across uh, evenly distributed across the entire length and width of the, the, the plank area and be thinking about how they're achieving that uh, but obviously they are clearly the leader in uh, the performance that's been generated from the underfloor so the way in which that the plank will interact with the circuit and certainly the fact that they are able or certainly appear to be able to ride the curbs better than many of the other teams may also play into the fact of why we're seeing as much uh, wear on the plank in those photos. But as you mentioned, I do think there is a case of the fact of how old is that plank versus how old is the plank that was on, on Lewis's car as well. So there's a lot of factors involved there. Red Bull obviously weren't so happy about these these images if it's, if it's floor getting out there, but it's played down played down the opportunity for the opposition saying you can't just copy our floor without understanding the concept and the thinking behind it but how valuable will these images be to Red Bull's rivals as they try to work out just what they're doing with the RB19? I think they're pretty invaluable to be perfectly honest I think a lot of the teams will be looking at them uh, because you know as we've said the, the frequency at which we see these images now is less and less uh, all the teams obviously have their own spy shots and uh, find ways in which to, to get pictures of the other the other cars um, but I do think it will be invaluable because Red Bull are clearly leading the pack in terms of the, the underfloor design. It, it does look uh, a very mature uh, version when you compare it to, to many of the others up and down the grid, uh, certainly in terms of the way in which the tunnels are shaped, the curvature, etc. Uh, and obviously now we, we've seen this new additional kick line within the diffuser uh, ramp itself as well. So I think the teams will learn from these things. But as uh, Christian Horner mentioned, you know, it's learning but also being able to understand that concept. And then it's also about being able to apply those things. It's not something that you can simply just turn up with at at the next race and and, and run. You know, these things have to take time to develop and they have to work with everything else. At the end of the day, the underfloor is just one component of many aerodynamic surfaces on the car. So, you know, although you might be able to have a very interesting underfloor design, it also has to work with, with the rest of the car aero map as well. So I think the teams will really enjoy what they've seen, but there's still a huge learning curve from both Red Bull to move forward with the regs and also the other teams as well. So, yeah, we'll, we'll continue to see development. Thanks, Matt. That's really, really interesting. Now, I know we have a lot of tech viewers on this channel. Did you notice anything particular, kind of differences between the two cars or anything stand out? Let us know in the comments below. We'll see you next time. Thanks so much and goodbye. Goodbye.